What's going on, y'all? So, so I was trying to decide whether or not I was going to split this up into two videos because this is two episodes in one. So I'm just going to put both episodes in one video just the same way VH1 wanted to air these shits. Okay. But now that we got that out the way, this is Black Ink Crew, uh, New York, season seven, episode one. Um, what is it called? Ain't no bark party like a Harlem block party. So basically Caesar is just, you know, wallowing in his success so far. He's building his empire. And, um, you know, he's throwing a little black party, thanking everybody who got him there, um, which was cute. He's bringing New Orleans to, I thought it was Carnival, but he said it's New Orleans or whatever. But, you know, okay, he's bringing that to the city because he also made the announcement that he is opening up his fourth shop, which now we know is more. I think he has a shop in, what, what Duchess stay at? North Carolina, South Carolina, one them, and he got a shop elsewhere too. But um, he's building his empire, so I can't even hate on that. And you know, he's just throwing a block party for the whole town, this whole block, whatever, and letting everybody know what's good. Um, so he's sharing his news with everybody. He goes inside. Um, you got Sky coming in, being carried in like she, you know. Of course, she says she's the empress of the shop, which was whatever. Okay, that's fine. That's cute. She's being ever so much sky, okay? But the part that irked me, <laughs> you got everybody there except for Melody, except for um, Young Bay, and I think that's it. Baby, hold up. First of all, let's just, let's just put it right here. It took how many seasons to get Walt to be in the actual opening credits, okay? I don't know if he was on the opening credits last season, but baby, Walt is in the opening credits this season, in the intro, okay, with everybody's name and everything. And I was like, that nigga been on this show since day one, and he is just now getting his names in the opening credit. That is fucked up. But, okay, so with that being said, um, you know, we got the thing with Alex and Donna, they going together, they kissing each other and all this stuff. You know, Kitty looking like, ain't this about a bitch? You know, uh, it looked nasty. It really did look nasty. It looked like they don't bathe. So, hey, it is what it is. You know, that ghetto hood, fake love, lust. Okay, that's what it is because it ain't love. I do not believe in people coming out of one relationship and falling so in love with somebody else in another relationship. No, I like back to back, back to back, not even giving time to breathe. Donna and Mohammed broke up and not even 24 hours later, she was with Alex. Okay. So, yeah, you can keep that. Um, it is what it is. But since Caesar is opening up this new shop, he basically says that, you know, he's going to bring some people down there to help run the shop and, you know, find the employees and vet it out, you know, for at least a month and then have everybody else that stays up here to run his 113th and his 125th shop. Okay, nothing wrong with that. But, of course, you always get that one person that's going to get in their feelings. You got Tati coming in with this dog. And she said it's her emotional support dog. They was clowning her because of it, especially Walt. And mostly because of the simple fact that every time she gets get in the shop, she gets into it with somebody. She got into it with Jada in Miami. She said she could never forgive her for that, for the way that she came at her. And when Jada was sitting there, she was looking at her like, uh, you know, like she still has some residual leftover feelings for Tati, like she still wanted to beat the bitch ass. And then when she got into it with, um, with Young Bay when she first got here and all that stuff, you know, she just, she don't want no more drama, okay? But at this point, Caesar tells them that, you know, um, I think it's going to be Tati, Tati, Ted, Walt, because they don't never bring Walt anywhere. So they brought Walt, um, Sky, and I think Alex, Alex, yeah, they're going to go down to New Orleans. And Donna gets in her feelings because she told, he told her that you're going down to 125th and you're going to be, you know, working on his high end clients out there. She gets in her feelings and basically both out talking about some it's fucked up that everybody else gets to go, especially these newbies get to go down to New York or um to New Orleans or whatever. And I've been here the longest. No, baby, it ain't about seniority, okay? Because if you want to go about seniority, you still wouldn't go. Second of all, it's about fucking talent. And compared to you and them, 
your talent is bullshit, okay? I don't want no gangry tattoos like you gave that lady, okay? Ain't nobody got time for that. Your tattooing is not up to par yet. You still act like you're an apprentice. That's how your tattoos look. They look so elementary. So, therefore, we need good representation to go down there. And that's why you're not going down there, okay? It ain't got nothing to do with seniority. Your shit just trash at the moment. You know, become better and then maybe. So, she talking about some... I'm tired of you disrespecting me and looking me over and all this stuff. And I don't give a fuck about your stupid ass shop or whatever. I'm gone. And then you can call me when you finally see the value what I bring to the shop. He said, get your ass out of here, you big bitch. When he said, you big bitch. I was about to say, you know what, Caesar, you wrong as shit. But then I said, you know what? It's Caesar. You wrong as shit. But she had it coming. Okay? You know? We don't need to be body shaming, but girl, come on. You be thinking too much of yourself, Donna. You really do. You need to pull, pull that shit down. So she upset, and Alex take her out there to Coney Island, and they having a good time, and she fuck up the mood because Alex want to call her her girl, call her his girlfriend. She don't want to put a label on things because things are going so cool. But then, you know, she talking about some... I think you should stay down here with me instead of going down there to New Orleans. Stay up here with me instead of going down there to New Orleans. So he got to stop his bag and stop his experience and stop, you know, him moving forward in life because you upset because you couldn't go down to New Orleans and, you know, he going to be gone for a month or whatever. Like, girl, get over it, okay? He was like, no. Caesar has done a lot for him, so therefore he's not going to, you know, say no to him, and he's just going to, this is a way to repay him by he, you know, looking up to Caesar, being a mentor to um, Alex and all this stuff. So I wouldn't have turned that shit down. Bitch, you ain't even my girlfriend, so why should I turn it down? You don't even want to put a label on what we're doing, so why should I turn it down? Donna, go somewhere, okay? Um, We get Caesar uh, and designer, designer coming to the shop, and... You know, I didn't know he had an album out. I didn't know he was working on a second album, bitch. All I heard was Panda, Panda, Panda. And that was the only song I saw the guy that I ever heard from um, Designer. No shade, but it is what it is. All the motherfuckers talk alike. You can't understand shit that they saying. Put fucking subtitles underneath the shit with Caesar, Because Caesar draws his stuff out. It's like his lips are so fucking heavy. Like... You know, you came from Bad Style, and that's where we come from. And I got out like everybody else that I know that ever came from Bad Style, they either dead or they in jail. I'm like, nigga, open up your mouth and enunciate a little bit, just a little bit. Like, you can enunciate Ebonics. I can understand that. Be like, yo, yo, son, you know, everybody that I know from Bad Style, they either dead or they in jail. Not they either dead or they in jail. I'm like, God damn. It irks me every time he opened up his mouth like that. But anyway, he gives um design a little tattoo. He pleased with it. Um, Young Bay was with Melody, and Melody had took her to go to immigration so she can do her um, test for citizenship. Now, I don't know if Young Bay been doing this for a while. She's been studying and going through the process for a while. She's been in the country for 10 years because the way that they made it seem like she just walked up in there and she walked out with her citizenship, and she was a naturalized citizen of the United States, and she got um, sworn in and all that stuff. Because she was pregnant, whatever, she passed the test and now she's a U.S. citizen. Um, They made it seem like it was real simple, okay? I wish they would have um, incorporated this into her storyline from the very beginning that she got on the show. So that you could show the process that it ain't really that simple. That show the process that she has been going through this for years or whatever. But it's cool that she went on ahead. When Walt found out that she got her citizenship, <laughs> she was like, Donald Trump still let us stay up in the um country? You know, I didn't even know. Like, it was it was, it was was a touch and go situation because you know how Trump ain't let nobody up in this country, whatever. So that was funny. But she wound up, it seemed like that exact same day because Melody had on the same clothes that she had on when she went to the immigration with um her. She wound up going into a premature labor and had her baby pre- uh, five weeks early. But he came out healthy and they was able to take him home. And, you know, she truly loves the baby. And that was a good thing. I like that part. That was a beautiful moment. Um, They get down there to New Orleans and... Of course, Ted and Tati, they all up in each other's face and, you know, flirting with each other. He looking at her ass, she poking it out. Um, when they first get down there, they get to the house and some girls there because the next day it's going to be Caesar's birthday. They having a little party for him. Um, they go to the shop. The shop look good. The shop, I will say, it looks really, really good, okay? 
you know, you got a bar in the shop, you got a kitchen in the shop, so you can eat in there, you can get tattoos, you can drink and all that stuff. And, you know, one point that, one thing that was said that kind of troubled me was the fact that Walt was the one getting really excited that it's a bar in the shop. And Walt was going on and on about how he was doing so much better. He got everything under control in his life. And, you know, he's budgeting and saving his money up and all that stuff. You know, when Walt was going through his shit, and I understand that, you know, you so, sometimes you don't want to have to depend on other people. But I was trying to think, like, how come if Caesar is opening up all this stuff, he making money. How come he couldn't help Walt out? But, you know, maybe he was just a prideful little nigga and he just didn't want to do it that way. So I understand that part. But Teddy was like, my understanding is, my confusion is, why is Walt so excited about this bar when he not even supposed to be drinking, but yet at the party he was drinking? And I said, that's not how 12-step and alcohol anonymous is supposed to work. You're supposed to not work to get your drinking under control. You're supposed to work to stop drinking, period, okay? Because it can be easily, once you're an addict, you're always an addict, okay? And so that concerns me. That really does concern me. Uh, apparently, Seeds told them to come back down to the shop. They down in the pool having fun and all this shit. He's upset with them. Sky comes down. Finally, she trying to get her room and... The episode ends with Caesar being upset with Sky because Sky said that, you know, she has to go back to Texas because it's her son's graduation. And Caesar is in his feelings because he needs to open up the shop and I can't do it by myself and all this shit. And I'm just like, why not? You got all them niggas right there. So why, why you can't utilize the ones that you brought down? What was the point of bringing them down if you're going to put everything on Sky? Okay. And why did you come down yourself if you're going to put everything on Sky? Grow the fuck up and you getting mad because she want to stay down there for four days to be with her son? Her son, somebody that you know she did not have a lot of time with and she's trying to make up time for, okay? That was very selfish of him. It really was because he claimed that she didn't tell him about the um, graduation or being down there and I feel like she did. I don't feel like she would have played around with that and I just felt like he was being a little selfish little bitch. That's it. And that was end of episode one. So, episode two, The Jokes of New Orleans, that's what it's called, and basically, I'm going to zoom right through this, and I'm, I'm, I apologize for it, the review going the way that it's going, because of the simple fact that I am tired, it is 1.34 in the morning, and I, if I don't do this tonight, it's not going to get done, so that's why I'm doing it, so I apologize out there. But anyway, so basically, it picks up where I left off with the first episode with Caesar being pissed off at Sky, but Sky's like, put these niggas to work, okay? Everything's gonna work out. You're gonna be good. Don't even fucking worry about it. So they all go out. It's Caesar's birthday. Um, you know, they go to a titty bar, a strip club or whatever. I don't like saying titty bar. But they go to a strip club and you know, everybody's having a good time. Then here comes Donna. She come lurking in. We see Alex with some strippers. He wasn't doing nothing but, you know, palming their asses. That's what they do at strip clubs. And, of course, he she gets in her feelings because he didn't get up and greet her. Okay? And he was still, still sitting there like he didn't really see her or whatever. But at the end of the day, I get how you can see that that as a little bit disrespectful because technically that's, well, you... In your mind, you think that's your man or whatever, and he didn't get up and greet you, but you didn't want to put a label on it, so what the fuck? And second of all, you ain't supposed to be down there. And third of all, it's a strip club. That's what you do, okay? It ain't like he was over there, you know, drinking shit out of uh, girl boobs or whatever, or, you know, biting the ass or, you know, kissing on them and fucking them or whatever. You didn't see them doing that. He was just sitting there like that. He wasn't doing shit. What, what, what else he supposed to do with a stripper? You know what I'm saying? Um, so she, of course, goes off causing a freaking scene and it's just it's just a mess they brought new york down to new orleans but hey it is what it is back in new york you got um you know melody and jade and um kid talking about the whole thing with um um uh, what's her name what's her name young bay having a baby and then of course you know melody talking about her situation with her parents um and how they were together and how her mother was disowned by the white side of her family. And she was thinking about whether or not she wanted to reconnect with that white side of her family, her maternal side. Because, you know, she hasn't seen them. They haven't seen um, 
her mother in 40 plus years and at the end of the day you can have judgment and be prejudiced and racist against a black man or whatever but guess what they still together okay and he was being a good provider for her family and everything so you know she was just thinking about that and you know they was just giving comfort or whatever so it was a good look it was cute you know bringing up different subjects that we needed to um hear especially what's going on today and so with that being said Melly had went over there to see um little baby Nico. Um and when they do that, they start talking about her parents again and her family situation or whatever. And she was like she did find somebody that was uh from her mother's side on Facebook and she got a um a number. His name's cousin Pete. Cousin Pete <laughs> That's all I can think about every time they say his name. Cutting Pete. You know, Lucky. Little Lucky. Who are you? I'm Cutting Pete. But anyway, uh, you know, so Young Bay, she was just happy to be there with somebody else who had a child. And she was encouraging her to reach out to her family. And she called that man. And that man literally said, well, um, me and Karen ain't close. Okay, I do remember her, but we ain't close. And therefore... I don't know. Just give me a few days and I'm busy right now. So I just felt bad for Melody because she took that to mean that they still harboring the same feelings, the same racist thoughts about the fact that she done ran off with a black man. And the only reason why she reached out at that moment was because, you know, Caesar got a shop open down there in New Orleans and Pete and some, and her family are from there. You know, her mother's family is from Louisiana. So, um, I felt bad for her. I felt bad for her in this day and age. It's very much alive and well that people don't want to be um, uh, associated with people of other races, other eth ethnicities and nationalities and things of that such. And it's very sad that that thinking still goes on. I have no problem with interracial dating as long as your motive, not your motive, but your preference is pure. You know what I'm saying? And that, when I say pure, meaning that there's no self-hate behind it. That's what I'm talking about. Because you do have some people who will say they will never date somebody of their same, of their same race or whatever, and I just don't understand that. But, okay. Moving on from that, I felt bad for Melody. I really did. But, um, you know, back at the shop in New Orleans, uh, Caesar wants to have a soft opening. That's what the whole thing that he was, you know, being upset about with Sky. And at the end of the day, after everything that happened, maybe, <laughs> maybe Sky should have stayed. But then again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put that on her because... After seeing how everything went down when um, Sky went back to Texas, it's understandable how come she stayed as long as she stayed. She deserved to have as much time with her son as she wanted to because he wasn't going to be there as long as she thought he would be. Um, she was able to get there to see his graduation and she was very proud of that because of the simple fact that she at least got through to one of her sons. And, you know, as we saw, I believe the relationship is okay with both of her sons now, because I did see a picture recently, you know, her posing with both her sons, and they was all in the same place, and they look happy. And so I hope we get to see that story unfold in this um, season with her storyline, as to see how that reconciliation happened between her and um, Genesis. Um, but you know, she was very much the proud mother, you know, and just happy that she was there to be able to support. And I do love and respect the fact that when Sky sees his, um, adopted mother, which she has no problem with him calling her mom, with him calling her mom. And, you know, the lady has no problem with Desilene calling Sky mom either, you know, and they, there's a level of respect amongst each other. And I love that. There's no contention. There's no hating. There's no jealousy. No envy. Or less. we not seeing that. And I like that. They're all getting along for the sake of him. And you can see that Scott is truly, truly appreciative. Threw him a little Hawaiian luau party afterwards. And then got him a car. And at that point found out that no. He's supposed to be leaving because he enlisted in the army. And then they had to sit down. Of course, Sky was in her feelings about it. And it's understandable because she said she just got this time with him. They haven't even been in each other's life for free, uh, for real, for real, for a year. Not even a whole year yet. And so, you know, it's understandable to have those feelings. But she know that he's a grown man and she got to let her baby go and let him do what he needs to do. And he said, I can go to the army. I can get out. I can still go to college for free and still be getting paid because I'm in the army. And it's a guy that's supposed to come there right in there to pick him up. And when they was talking, was I the only one who had 
thought like slight for a second thought that this was gonna be like his way of saying that Genesis, you know, reached out and wanted to get back together and the surprise or the guy that was supposed to come pick him up, he really wasn't going to the army, but it was gonna be a surprise for Sky and it was gonna be Genesis, but you know, of course that didn't happen. It really was the army recruiter dude that came there to pick him up. And, you know, that was a little sad, touchy moment. But it's good that they still have their relationship on tack, intact, though. And she was able to share that moment with him. Um, We get back in New Orleans. Alex trying to butter up to death. Uh, what's that girl name? What's Donna? I was about to call her Destiny. Wrong show. Donna, okay, get back with her, brought her little teddy bear and all that stuff, and of course, she throw a little fit, throw the teddy bear out, you think you can do this, you ain't even gonna admit to what you did and all this stuff, he was like, look, I was just having fun, you better be glad I ain't do this and do that, you ain't see me, you know, fucking and stripping and all this stuff, and I'm just sitting here like, oh, I don't care about this scene, and then to woo her back, what he gonna throw out there, I love you, you love me? But guess what? I love you too. <laughs> you for real? Yes. I was like, ugh, okay, if that's what you want to feel, that's what you want to feel. At the end of the episode, Caesar had um also Caesar had hired a new tattoo artist from New Orleans. His name is Ace. He's been tattooing for 10 years, right? Now correct me if I'm wrong, because he look like he's black and Asian. Okay, so he look a little Belasian. Um if anybody got watch growing up hip hop. Either the first or second season, remember when Romeo was up in there and he was in the studio supposed to be working on an album or whatever with uh, his little crew or whatever and the little black and these um, um, Belasian dude that was there. Was that Ace? Because I remember the look and I remember the dress. I was like, is that him? He looks so familiar. Please correct me, Ma. I think that really is him because how many, you know, Belasian, um, I hope that is not offensive to anybody who's Asian and um, Af uh african-american or african you know i hope that's not offensive um so yeah he looked familiar so i think that is him but you know they they were supposed to promote the shop and promote that they finna have this soft opening party or whatever that's walt's job ever since walt been down there he's been drinking 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 and caesar has been noticing this and the day of the party comes it's hours after this party's supposed to start and you know don't nobody really get to a party at on time you know we get there like a couple of hours later you know you don't want to be the first one there and all that shit that's a little lame or whatever but no one shows up no one shows up because walt didn't properly um promote the party he's over there drunk as fuck and everybody's looking like why are you drinking when you're supposed to this is what led you to be fucked up in the first place and have so much stuff happen to you in the first place because of your drinking so what is your problem and at this point in time caesar is pissed and caesar goes to fuck off and he fires walt then donna comes in and then she's saying all this stuff and he was like what the fuck you doing down here you supposed to be managing my shop in one 13 and kids supposed to be at 125th what is happening okay this is why i can't get shit done and leave y'all you know y'all want me to fucking micromanage y'all asses and i can't do that that's not what i supposed to be out here doing and so at this point in time he somewhat fired donna which we know that they ain't really fired but he was just in his feelings about that shit and it's understandable everybody fucking up you know like he said they trying to make him the joke of new orleans and i said at the, at, at one point you got to understand that you bred this atmosphere. Every time y'all look up, you're throwing a party for this and you're doing this and you're doing that. Can we get some professionalism in here? There is none. So how do you expect your your shot to really be running, your people to run? So, hey, it is what it is. That was Black Ink Crew. Y'all tell me how y'all felt about it. If I missed anything, let's fill it in in the blank. Once again, I apologize for it being late. Y'all know what it was. It was a lot of reviews tonight and it's late. And so if it's a little lackluster, I apologize because I'm tired. And I have to go to work in the morning. So I see y'all later, okay? Peace. <laughs>